Hello and welcome to Bike Social by Bennett's. I'm Michael Mann and you join me here at the Cartagena circuit down in just on the outskirts of Murcia in southern Spain and it is beautiful and it is very hot. Triumph have brought us here to let us ride the updated for 2020 uh, Triumph Street Triple RS. So we're going to check out what it's like on both road and track. So here I am with Stuart Wood, Chief Engineer for Triumph. Stuart, thanks for joining me. Welcome. Now, we've got a brand new 2020 model, uh, massively updated really from the 2017 model when you start looking at the spec sheets and the presentations. Yeah. But if you just talk me through um, the significant updates, perhaps we'll start with look the styling, that's the most obvious okay. standout. Well, obviously there's a long line of street triples now. Um, it's evolved a lot. Uh, the bike's always been a really aggressive stance, really sporty look to it. Um, main feature, probably the, the twin headlights. Yeah. Uh, we've got a new update, all LED headlight, really distinctive uh, DRL light in there as well, LED DRL, mm -hmm. looks, really looks the part. I think the whole bike stands really nicely now. Back end's completely changed, um, panels around the radiator, the exhaust system as well. It's not just about the overall look, there's little details, nice little touches. If you look at the, um, the science of the can, I mean, you've got a lovely little carbon finisher on the end it's as nice, well. Yeah. It's, it's all about detail yeah. and finish as well as specification. So all this comes together. You know, we want the bike to be valuable for our customers so, and all the riders. So. Great. And what about the engine? Um, okay, it had to be Euro 5 compliant, yeah, of course. Absolutely. That's a, well, a that was a, Euro 5 was the, um, a reason why we needed to make a change, mm -hmm. but it's, it's not a constraint as such. We sort of embrace these things and, and take the opportunity to re-optimise. So we've had really good feedback um, with the 7, 765 Street Triple on the R and the RS about the different characteristics that we dialed into those bikes. So the RS was all about achieving power mm -hmm. and giving the um, ultimate for, for track use. The R was a bike of choice for a lot of people. Um, it had a load, load of mid-range torque. It was all about mid-range torque and response. Still making 118 PS, mm -hmm. but that mid-range was even stronger than on the RS. So what we've done, we've basically retuned the engine, we've changed a lot of stuff as well, um, to achieve the top end power, but also give all of that mid-range torque as well. Mm -hmm. So the start point for that is a freer flowing exhaust system. So if you bear in mind, Euro 5 is about emissions. Uh, that's one of, one of the things that yeah. we were targeting hard. And as such, this engine is a very clean engine anyway, but all engines will require catalysts. We've made the exhaust system free of flowing. We've now got two catalysts instead of one. We didn't take the single catalyst and increase the density of the, of the core there. Mm -hmm. We have engineered the exhaust to give us more flow. What that's allowed us to do is to go further with um, the tune and the exhaust cam and also with balance pipes on the exhaust to give that mid-range, really fill that mid-range. So over about 4,000 RPM, we've got more power and more torque. Yeah. So it's really, really healthy it's update. Definitely noticeable too, yeah. certainly on track. Absolutely. Well, we've reduced engine inertia as well. Um, that again makes the engine more responsive. Um, we've uh, reduced a little bit of mass there. Overall, we've got the same bike mass because we've had to add extra catalysts. It's always uh, pluses and minuses, but we've put extra effort in to make sure there wasn't any knock-on implications from having to do right. more for legislation. Um, yes, as you say, the TFT instruments, mm -hmm. they've been updated as well. Um, completely new graphics, um, four, four different graphic styles on there, including ability to change colours mm. now, if you want to as well. So again, much, much increased, uh, sort of more, um, more up-to-date graphics on that, yeah. look really good. Shift assist is fantastic. Um, shift assist, both up and down, is great on the track, but this has been tuned so nicely. I'm really rated on this bike. We're riding round on the roads this morning, even coming into town, you can be downshifting without the clutch, 
right up to the point you're stopping yeah. at the lights. So it's Incredibly very, very smooth. smooth. Yeah. yeah. Well, really I, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't notice any kind of jerkiness going up or coming down no. at any, any speed, any yeah. RPM. And that yeah. was, again, it's, it's yeah. obviously been really refined. It's, and it's, it's all part of, yeah, we do a, put an awful lot of effort into refinement. Um, and this is of everything, the handling, engine response, the shift assist, it's all about creating a really intuitive ride. Mm. You don't want to be thinking how you're going to turn into that corner, how you're going to have to force a bike to do what you want it to do. You want to think it and it's going to happen. Right. Same with throttle response, same with the shift. So it's all part of the same sort of ethos. And, um, and part of what's great about the Street Triple, past and present, is its, uh, its lightweight agility and ability. It's, you've you've managed to retain that, uh, or keep the weight yep. off. Yeah, we're lightest in class, um, also lightest wheels in class. Again, all about agility, um, getting the bike as agile as we can. It's got really sure-footed handling as well. So at higher speeds, really sure-footed, really stable, but with maximum agility, and it's totally predictable. Mm. So it doesn't matter what angle of lean you're going to, it's going to do exactly what you expect every time, so. A, a final word on, on Euro 5, and it's, uh, they've made the ABS is now mandatory, right? That's correct, yes. And have you made, had to adjust your systems accordingly, or is it just is it straight from the last model onto this? In the, it is straight from the last model. Um, we already had a track mode, um, so we've got a road ABS and track ABS. Okay. Um, the track ABS has to be road legal, okay? So this is, the requirement now, sure. um, and every bike will have to do, it. Have to have do to that. Conform. That's right. Fab, thank you so much for okay, the insight. Okay, you're welcome. Cheers. the RS model. The outgoing bike, the 2017 bike, has got uh, the S and the R and the RS in the, in the range, three bikes. But Triumph have only done the RS uh, this time around. So it's the 2020 model, that means that it's got to be Euro 5 friendly. That means it's got to comply with all those sort of emission regulations. And it's given them the chance to update a bike that's now three years old with, well, styling tweaks. So they've updated a lot of the uh, bodywork around the rear of the bike, uh, the side, the uh, aerodynamics around the, around the side of the bike, uh, the headlights as well redesigned, and they've taken the opportunity to do some stuff with the electronics. So they've updated the rider modes, and they've also done some bits and pieces with the TFT dash, which is absolutely beautiful. One of the best uh, on any bike I've ever ridden, I think. It's very clear, it's very easy to use. It's got the little joystick that's sort of semi-familiar with uh, a lot of recent Triumphs. Hey, and get this, the price tag on the bike is 10,300 pounds. That means it hasn't changed since the, so from the Algo model. So that's really good. And it's in dealerships uh, in November is what Triumph have told us. So they've got the three cylinder 765cc engine that's very familiar now uh, for the last three years. It's the, the, the motor on which the, the current Moto 2 World Championship engine, the race engine, is based. And it sounds beautiful, doesn't it? That beautiful little howl of the, of the triple that we're quite, we're quite uh, familiar with now. Makes a tiny, teeny proportion more horsepower at peak uh, RPM. It's just over 121 horsepower. Um, when I say a tiny bit more, I mean more than the outgoing model. And uh, two newton meters more torque. Uh, than the outgoing model. So yeah, so the changes were obviously inevitable with the Euro 5 stuff coming in. And it kind of touches every sense, this bike. So nice to hear that three cylinder engine. Uh, and they've made some revisions to the exhaust. It's now got two cats, not just one. Uh, its peak torque is slightly lower in the rev range uh, at 9,350. So that's down 1,650 RPM than the old stuff. The old stuff. Um, and then power is up they say they claim 9% higher in the mid-range. And when I say mid-range, that's like 8,000 RPM. And you can tell. Whoa. I've had a session on track. We've ridden for about, I don't know, 60, 70 kilometers on road as well. And you can definitely tell there's a little bit more punch in the mid-range. Um, it's always been a bit of a divine middleweight, naked, uh, really, really good roadster. 
very nimble, very light. It's only 160 kilos dry. Oh, I know what else is new, uh, the gearbox. So the gearbox, they've changed a few bits and pieces with the gears, the internal, you know, the, the actual uh, cogs. Um, but they've also made the quick shift system uh, a little better and it's now fitted as standard. So that's up and down and you get the auto blipper in that as well. But this is a bike with loads of great components too. It's got the Pirelli Super Corsa SP tires. It's got the Olin's um, uh, ST40 rear shock. It's got the Showa uh, BPF, that's big piston forks. The 41 mil forks on the front. It's got Brembo M50s twin discs on the front. It's got some really, really good components. And then when you add in that uh, TFT display, it's lovely, it's a cracking bike. 10 grand, a lot of money, but it's not gone up any since, you know, from the old bike, which is great news. They've sold, what do they say now, 90,000 of them since 2007, which is when the, the original uh, Street Triple came, came, into, uh, came to the market. It's very agile, it's great on circuit, you can get it tipped in very easily. Uh, it's great to kind of counter steer. Five rider modes, all of which you can change. Well, there's, there is a, a ride, sorry, five engine modes, of which one of them is called rider, and that's the one you can change. So you can turn traction off and all the rest of it. But yeah, I'm really impressed. It always was a good bike, and it's just been updated. Had a few little tweaks here, make it even better. Trying to do a cracking job, really, really impressed. then well that's uh, a full day on both road and track with this brand new for 2020 the triumph street triple rs and uh, what was already a fantastic bike the 2017 model uh, has been upgraded of course to to comply with those regulations we've already spoken about it's difficult to, to get across how how difficult it is the process of updating a bike to make it comply with those regulations and yet still be as brilliant as it is you know without losing all the power so the overall enhancements to the bike, both style and both engineering, electronically. They've all come and they've created, you know, they've really taken a step up in terms of the package. The Street Triple RS was already a brilliant model. The Tier 2 Dash is one of the best on the market. If you can get used to the operating the joystick and the memory and the modes and the home button, there's so many buttons on here, that you'll have a whale of a time with it. Uh, in terms of its ability on ad agility on the on the road and track then this it's almost second to none it's like built for it on a circuit like this at cartagena there's a big one big long straight but the rest of it's really really nagery really twisty uh, i mentioned it in the commentary where you you can really throw this thing around and it holds and that's primarily because of those brilliant components we've talked about the pirelli rubber we've talked about olins and um showa and brembo and all those things that come together as a as uh, a real complementary package that, 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 that take the electronics and the engineering and, and just make it into a, a terrific motorbike. And the fact that it's not increased in price as well, I, I can almost find nothing wrong with it. Some people have been talking about the ABS in, in being intrusive, but do you know what? For 99% of the people that are going to ride this bike, it won't be an issue, it won't be a problem. The gearbox is so plush, it's so lovely. There's no pitch at all when you're changing up or changing down, you can barely feel it. It's so, it's so good. Look, I, I, it, I'm running out of superlatives for this motorbike. It's, uh, it's terrific. I'll tell you what, maybe because it only comes in two colours, that might be a downside. Look, you can read the full review at bikesocial.co.uk.